Can electric vehicles actually make a difference in climate change? Welcome back to the channel, Dan here from Northern EV. And today we're delving deep into the heart of the electric vehicle revolution. Once you drive electric, you will realize all the benefits from no gas bill, faster cars, quieter cars, less maintenance, the list goes on and on. But the real push for the transition to EVs come from the profound impact on our environment. So let's start by peering into the global carbon challenge. Carbon emissions from fossil fuels are triggering climate disruptions worldwide. Our planet needs a shift, and electric vehicles might just hold the key. While estimates vary, the transportation sector is believed to contribute between around 25% of polluting emissions worldwide. Passenger cars make up 39% of overall CO2 emissions by the transportation sector, followed by the 23% for medium and heavy trucks. Shipping and aviation are next at 11 and 9% respectively. So the vehicles we drive on our roads is a big chunk of overall CO2 emissions. Electric vehicles have made leaps and bounds in the last decade and are seen as the hope for the future. But are they that green and will it make a difference? All right, I just want to take a second and let you know that this video is sponsored by Best EV Mod. They've developed many products for many EVs like Tesla Mach-E, Rivian, Ionic, EV6, and even the Hummer EV. Check them out at amazon.com slash bestevmod or their official selling partner website at ev vitastore And I'll have a link down below in the description below. The most common response I get from the hardcore naysayers is, well, making batteries uses fossil fuels and the electricity isn't green. So let's look into these factors. Battery production does raise some questions. One source of EV emissions is the creation of their large lithium ion batteries. The use of minerals including lithium, cobalt, and nickel, which are crucial for modern EV batteries, requires using fossil fuels to mine those materials and then heat them to high temperatures. As a result, building the 80 kilowatt lithium ion battery found in a Tesla Model 3 creates between 2.5 and 16 metric tons of CO2. Exactly how much depends greatly on what energy source is used to do the heating. This intensive battery manufacturing means that building a new EV can produce around 80% more emissions than building a comparable gas-powered car. But it's important to view the bigger picture. While producing batteries does generate emissions, an EV's overall life cycle emissions, including driving and recycling, are significantly lower than those of conventional cars. So you might wonder about power plant emissions. But just like with gasoline cars, most emissions from today's EVs come after they roll off the production floor. The major source of EV emissions is the energy used to charge their batteries. These emissions vary enormously based on where the car is driven and what kind of energy is used there. The best case scenario looks like what's happening today in Norway, Europe's largest EV market. The nation draws most of its energy from hydropower, giving all those EVs a minuscule carbon footprint. In countries that get most of their energy from burning dirty coal, the emission numbers for EVs doesn't look nearly as good, but they're still on par with or better than burning gasoline. And here's a scoop. As we transition to EVs, we're also transitioning to cleaner energy sources like solar and wind, which means the electricity charging your EV is going to get cleaner as well. No, it's not all clean. It differs from region to region, from household to household, but it's going to make a difference. So let's dive into some numbers and compare one EV versus one gasoline car. A single gasoline car emits around 2.3 metric tons of carbon annually. Contrast that with electric vehicles, which produce zero emissions. So you're saving that much carbon. But let's look closer at the relationship with the way fuel, be it gasoline or electricity, is produced, because that makes a difference. In 2019, MIT conducted a study called Insights into Future Mobility. This study looked at comparable vehicles like the Toyota Camry and Honda Clarity that offered various different configurations, including gasoline, hybrid, plug-in hybrid, and battery electric. The researchers found that on average, gasoline cars emit more than 350 grams of CO2 per mile driven over their lifetimes. The hybrid and plug-in hybrid versions, meanwhile, scored at around 260 grams per mile of carbon dioxide, while the fully battery electric vehicles created just 200 grams. Stats from the U.S. Department of Energy tell a similar story. Using nationwide average of different energy sources, 
The DOE found that EVs create 3,932 pounds of CO2 equivalent per year, compared to 5,772 pounds for plug-in hybrids, 6,258 pounds for typical hybrids, and 11,435 pounds for gasoline vehicles. But sometimes numbers alone can't capture the true impact of electric vehicles. Let me share a story that illustrates this beautifully. When I bought my Tesla back in 2019, there was one other Tesla at my work. People kept asking us about it, asking us questions, and that's actually kind of how this channel started. Then someone else got a Tesla and someone else got another one. In only three years, there are now a dozen Teslas in our parking lot along with an Audi e-tron and two Kia EV6s. That is amazing. And it's just one example of how a single decision can create a domino effect, ultimately contributing to a cleaner and healthier world. Now, it's not just about the numbers, it's about the real world impact we can all make when we choose green. So picture this, a world where the streets are bustling with life, but the air is cleaner than ever. It's a world where the hum of electric vehicles replaces the roar of combustion engine. This isn't science fiction, it's actually a future we can build together, and we saw a glimpse of it a few years back. So the big question, and the point of this video, is Will this make a dent in the world's carbon emissions? By the year 2040, if national goals are met, we should see 50% EV adoption. That means transportation CO2 will go down from 3.4 billion tons to 1.4 billion. And by the year 2050, that should be 100% EV adoption, and those numbers will fall to only 250 million tons of CO2. But will that make a difference compared to the overall CO2 emissions worldwide? Thankfully, we have a good case study. You all remember COVID, right? Well, I'm sure most of us would like to erase it from our memories, but remember in March 2020 when the entire world shut down for months? Everyone was under lockdown and were staying home. This resulted in roads without cars. While in 2019, annual CO2 reached 37.08 billion tons of CO2. And then in 2020, it dropped to 35.26 billion tons. When you narrow in on transportation alone, it went from 5.95 billion to 5.34 billion. That doesn't seem like much, but do you all remember how clean our cities were? The smog was gone, the haze was gone. Then in 2021, we're back to normal and already rising. Now, funny enough, there has been other times when global emissions dropped suddenly. In 2009, 1992, 1982, 1945. And all these times coincide with economic downturns where there was less travel and industrial production slowed down, but none quite as significant as the COVID shutdown. So we know cars play a big role in the global emissions and the overall health of our cities. If you take all these gasoline cars off the road and replace them with electric, we'll have that same effect. So again, just a quick minute to thank the sponsor of this video, Best EV Mod. They make all kinds of accessories for EVs, such as rear spoilers, console organizers, mud flaps, floor mats, and a lot of other stuff that you don't even know you need. It's clear that electric vehicles are more than just a trend. They are a solution to one of our planet's greatest challenges, climate change. We've explored the impact of carbon emissions, delved into common arguments, compared the environmental footprint of EVs to gasoline cars, and even looked at the potential of mass EV adoption. The numbers just don't lie. Electric vehicles have the potential to significantly reduce carbon emissions, making our cities cleaner and our air fresher. The transition to cleaner energy sources is well underway, making the electricity charging your EV cleaner too. Once we decarbonize the electric grid, the comparison between gasoline and EV is going to get better and better. So are electric vehicles truly the green future we envision? The answer is yes. But of course, it's not a magic solution as we've learned. It's part of a broader effort to combat climate change. Much like the unprecedented emissions dropped during the COVID-19 lockdowns, we know that not having gasoline cars on the road makes a difference. Transitioning to electric vehicles is a step in the right direction, but it's just one piece of the puzzle. The real change happens when we collectively choose cleaner transportation, cleaner energy, and a cleaner future. So let's strive towards a greener tomorrow. Share this message, share this video, start the conversation, and join the movement for a sustainable future. Together, we can make a difference. All right, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss videos, which I release about every week. Drive safe, drive electric, and we'll see you next week.
All right, welcome back to the channel. Dan here from Northern EV. And today we're diving. So are electric vehicles truly the green ant? Green ant? Thanks again for watching and, and drive. Well, making batteries uses fossil fuel and the electricity. If national goals are met, we should see 50% EV adoption. That means uh, uh, transportation. So the big question is, will this make? So the big question and what I've been trying to get at. Vary enormously based on where the car is. We should see 50% EV adoption. That means we're going to go from 3.4 billion uh, carbon. So you might be. So the big question and the point of this video is, will this make? But let's look at closer. At, but sometimes numbers alone can't capture the true impact of electric vehicles. Let me share a story that electric. But sometimes numbers alone can't capture the true impact of electric vehicles and how the. All right, I think we're done.